you can create some absolutely incredible AI video transformations with this new feature from Pika Labs, which lets you generate up to 10 second video transformations using keyframes. While there are other AI video generators like Kling that already have a feature like this, Pika Labs has taken it to another level with the amount of creativity that's possible. All you need to do is upload the first image frame and then the last image frame for the video. And the AI uses its imagination to fill in what's in between. While it might seem like a simple feature, it's actually a really powerful tool. I'll show you a bunch of different ways to use it, like creating these infinitely looping videos. For example, this boy in a sunflower field listening to his headphones. Dynamic camera movements zooming through the window of the spaceship. Or this camera panning from the gladiator towards the minotaur in the arena. And a bunch of other unique use cases that are possible with this new feature. To use Pika frames, we'll go to pika.art. I haven't used them in a while, but this new Pika frames feature down here was worth reviewing. It's easy to use. We just have to upload the first frame and the last frame of our AI video for the transformation. So to start off, I've got these two images of a sports car and a transformer robot. This is actually a complicated transformation. I haven't seen any other AI able to do yet. We'll upload the car as the first frame and the robot as the last frame. Then I'll describe the transformation inside the prompt bar. The car transforms into the transformer robot. Then I'll hit this generate button down here that looks like a star. I was honestly pretty surprised by how well this example worked. I was expecting a lot of warping or deformation, but the transformation is pretty smooth. Not quite at the level of the actual Transformer movies, but better CGI than most low budget TV shows. Here's a comparison with what I get when trying the same thing in the Kling video generator. Pika does have more creativity when it comes to this keyframes feature, while Kling kind of avoids it just dropping in the robot from the sky. To create the images for the car and also the robot, I started by prompting for this picture in mid journey. Full body shot photo of a bright yellow transformer robot on a city street. I'll need to keep the background as consistent as possible for the car photo. So I used the editor tool down here to do image painting. First I'll use this ink painting eraser brush to draw over all the regions I want to replace which is a robot and also on the ground between his legs. We'll need to get rid of all of that. And then I'll change the prompt to side profile photo of a yellow Lamborghini on a city street. And after we submit the new photo, the background stays mostly the same, but we have a yellow sports car instead of the robot. There's a ton of different visual effects you can create with this feature. I made one of an origami bird flying and then landing and unfolding back into a piece of paper. I'll show you how to do these looping style videos later on. Graphic illustrations and logos work pretty well, transforming from a mountain landscape to this vector graphic. I also made one for what my own channel logo might look like. One way you can use this keyframing feature is to create infinite looping videos. So let's create a looping video for this boy listening to music on his noise cancelling headphones, trying to find some escape in the field of flowers. We'll start by uploading the picture of the boy in the street as the first frame, and then the boy in the field of flowers as the last frame. In the prompt I'll use flowers grow on the street as musical notes float through the air. That'll give us the first half of the looping video where the sunflowers grow onto the street. When that's done, we'll go back to the keyframes tab. Let's use this swap button in the middle, which changes the order so the sunflowers photo is first. Now we'll use the prompt, the flowers wither away onto the street. By the way, you can control how long you want the transformations to be, from 1 second all the way up to 10 seconds. I found that somewhere in the middle range between 4 to 8 seconds seems to work the best where you actually give the AI enough time to transform the video, but not too long. And here we have the sunflower slowly fading away. Now all we need to do is layer the two videos of the boy together in a video editor like this. And we can get an infinite looping video of the boy with his headphones on, with the flowers fading in and then fading out. Just like before, I used image in painting inside Mid Journey to take my image of the boy on the street and adding sunflowers to the background around him. You can use this in painting method in pretty much any AI image generator to create the same effect. A great way to use this new Pika Frames feature is to direct camera motions inside your AI films. So by controlling the first and last frame and adding in a prompt like the camera panning towards a minotaur, you can direct the scene with way more control than if you used only a single reference image. 
we can create much bigger camera motions than you think, like zooming through the window of the spaceship to see the astronaut inside. Now, the more straightforward the transition is, the easier it is for the AI to animate, as the motions you try to animate get bigger and more complex, like these angled shots of the astronaut and the spaceship. It's not as seamless anymore. The astronaut kind of fades into the video. Sometimes you get bigger deformations, especially for big motions. This one didn't work so well, some blobs appear on the screen. One motion I've seen a lot of other users mention is this whip pan effect, where you quickly pan from one subject to another inside the same environment. One limitation you can run into when trying to create these big camera motions is that the videos can get a little pixelated and shaky. So here I'm panning from the sky to the city below, and you'll observe some pixelation and shakiness in the frames of the video. This is pretty common inside other AIs as well. What I really do like about this feature is the amount of creativity it gives you. Here's a couple examples of pencil sketches transforming into real life photos. If we compare it to other platforms I claim, the Pika feature does a better job of interpolating between the different frames in my opinion, and giving you what you actually asked for. To try this feature, you will need a paid plan. I had the pro plan and I had enough credits for about 42 or 43 videos using this new feature. Now, if you want to learn how to create consistent AI characters to put inside the AI videos that you're creating, go watch this tutorial right here.